Hi, in this lesson I want to talk about what Barry Harris called playing the minor six on the fifth of the tritone substitute. Sounds complicated, but it's really not. If we take a G7 chord, the tritone substitute is one with a root, a flattened fifth away, in this case D flat seven. The fifth of D flat seven is A flat. So if we play an A flat minor six chord, but put it over a G seven, we get two altered notes there, the A flat, the flat ninth, and the E flat, the flat and thirteenth. Now you can create nice movement using uh, the a flat minor six diminished scale, which is this one. If we play that over a G seven. It sounds a little bit sort of harsh when, when you play the whole chord over the G7, but where it's really effective is if you use some of the notes. And also, as you're going up the scale, if you're on the A flat minor six chord, to borrow notes from the next diminished chord and vice versa. For example, on a G7 chord, I could play something like this. Look at those four notes and then rearrange them. If I take that F and put it up there, take that A flat, put it down there, that's an A flat minor six chord, and I got G down in the bass. But I didn't play that straight away, I played these two notes a step above. Uh, the two notes from the A flat minor six chord. Now these notes are borrowed from the diminished seventh chord. So you get this wonderful tension. And then you could do something like uh, go down to play the A flat minor six chord there. Those four notes are A flat minor six, G in the bass. And then the top two notes could change to D and F so that we've now got a diminished seventh chord there with G in the bass. That makes it a G7 with a flat ninth. Let's look at what I played in the introduction then. The first bar is marked as E minor seven. Now remember that E minor seven contains the same notes as G major 6. If I take the E from the bottom and put it at the top, we have a G major 6 chord. And therefore, we can create movement over an E minor 7 chord by using the G major 6 diminished scale. It's just alternating major 6 chords with diminished 7 chords. The first voicing that I played was this one. Just three notes in the right hand, one in the left hand. Now note that the top note, G, and the bass note, B, are going to move in contrary motion. I'm going on to a diminished seventh chord, and I'm now playing four notes in the right hand, one in the left hand. And then I'm going back to the E minor seven, or G major sixth chord, but in this voicing. Now that's an example of what we call a drop two voicing. I played the chord like that, with the notes all bunched together in the right hand. Take the next to the top note, G, out and put it in the bass. We've got a drop two voicing. Now the top note, B, and the bass note, G, move in similar motion now, but note that they're moving in tense. And that always works well. I move on to another drop two voicing. I played the chord like that. Take the next to the top note, E out, play it down in the bass. 
then I've got an, another drop two way thing. So once again, so you see how that created movement over the uh, the E minor seven chord. In the next bar, I went on to an A7 chord and I played this voicing. If I take the bass note A away and look at the top four notes, if I then take the G and put it up there, you can see that that's a B flat minor six chord. And this is another example of what Barry Harris called playing a minor six chord on the fifth of the tritone substitute. So that's an A7 chord. The tritone substitute is E flat seven. And the fifth of E flat seven is B flat. So you can play a B flat minor six chord on A7. It works because B flat is the flat ninth, that's the third. F is the flat and thirteenth and G is the seventh. So you note that it's got two alter notes, the flat and ninth and the flat and thirteenth. A quicker way of finding that chord is to just think of a minor sixth chord whose root is a semitone above the root of the dominant seventh chord that you're playing. So you're on A7, the root is A, just go up a semitone, play B flat minor six. So I played that voicing first, and then the top two notes went on to E and G. So I'd gone on to a diminished seventh chord, making it an A7 with a flat ninth. That's the flat ninth. The next bar is D minor seven, and just like E minor seven contains the same notes as G major six, D minor seven contains the notes of an F major six chord. So once again, we can create movement using an F major six diminished scale. So I did a similar thing to what I did on the E minor seven, that is I played, started off in contrary motion, Three notes right hand, one left hand, then went on to a diminished seventh chord with four notes in the right hand, one in the left hand, and then I did another drop two voicing. And then the outer notes, the top one and the bass one, just went in contrary motion. The right hand went up a third, the left hand went down a third. And then I went on to this chord. Now, that is an example of using a minor six on the fifth of the tritone substitute. That would be an A flat minor seven chord. However, I'm starting off with two notes from that chord and two notes that are borrowed from the diminished seventh chord in the A flat minor six diminished scale. And that can be very effective when you play some notes of the minor six and some notes of the diminished seventh chord. You get that nice tension there. So the top two notes both come down there and then you've got the A flat minor six. If I took the A flat down there, you can see clearly that that's A flat minor six. So, and then I went on to this chord. Now, if you look at that, again, that's A flat minor six. I'm playing it over D flat. So I'm playing a tritone substitute for G seven. Now, if you remember in the last video, I talked about using a minor sixth on the fifth of a dominant seventh chord. So on a G7 chord, you can play a D minor six chord. And it just makes it a straightforward G9. So that's what I ended up with there, a D flat nine. But you notice that I played the G first, which then went on to the 
uh, to the end. So the G was just one borrowed note from the diminished seventh chord. And again, it creates tension. So once again, let's just go through that. So that was. And then we just go to C major six, nine. Hope you found that interesting. If you did and you haven't done so so far, if you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe, I'd be really grateful. And I always welcome any questions that you have. Thank you. See you in the next video.